All right, so this this video you're about to watch is uh, us converting this Schneider XW system into uh, a solar arc system. Uh, I think we're on like the fifth or sixth iteration of this particular install. The original company that did the install is uh, kind of out of the picture. I changed his battery out twice. The la latest battery he had was these two Fortress E vaults that you see, and we're going to keep those, but we're going to put a Solark in, and we're going to go up on the roof. And then up on the roof, we're going to be rewiring his solar panels. He's got it wired right now for charge controllers, and they're in uh, strings of three. And uh, as you know, with the Solark, it's got a 450 volt open circuit limit, so or 450 volt operating limit. So we're going to be able to wire this uh, solar array a lot differently. And we've got to plop the panels anyway because we are going to be adding the EMP hardening. So we've got to add ferrite cores to all the panels. So we're going to get this install underway. All right, folks. Hello. So we just showed up on this job. We are actually going to do, be doing a big changeover. We're going to be changing over this old Schneider system to a solar and we've got some kind of a complicated electrical setup but we're going to get her and uh, we're going to leave these two e-volts but we're going to be slapping in a solar hopefully uh, get this guy a lot more usage of his solar because he is behind the meter 100 percent he's on a utility that doesn't allow you to sell back okay guys so we're deep in the in the reworkings of this system and uh the goal here is to make it less complicated, make it easier for the user, make it easier for him to understand what he has, understand what his system's doing, and make it easier for the system to lower the power bill without pushing power back on the grid. Because this is one of those setups where the power company does not allow you to sell back. So that's where the Solark really, you know, kind of jumps above all these other old inverters because it, it it can really do zero export well and save people a lot of money behind the meter. And uh, that's when you don't have a uh, the permission to sell back or you don't have a uh, net metering agreement. I'll take you outside. So Scott's been working on this. I've been up on the roof rewiring with the, with the man. So we got our generator in yesterday. We've already got a transfer switch up and um, the generator is going to be Strictly controlled by the Solark. It's only going to come on and uh, help the Solark. It's going to charge up batteries when the when the grid is uh, down, and the Solark is needs a little extra. Uh, it's also going to be able to be passed through. So if the Solark ever fails, he'll be able to hit a couple switches and pass the generator through to all of his critical loads. Now, so I'm up here on a ladder redoing these combiner boxes. They had 10 strings of three coming down to the old system. And once again, in the in the theme of simplifying and uh, reducing uh, complexity, we're just gonna have three strings of, t of uh, nine coming down from the old panels. And they're gonna get fused and combined to go into one MPPT channel of the Solark. And then we're gonna have another string uh, of 10 new panels and those are just going to go straight through they're going to pass through this box and go straight down to the solar arc so the solar is going to have one mppt channel with 3400 watts of new panels another mppt channel with three strings of nine of the old panels so i'm basically rewiring this uh low volt or 150 volt combiner for uh, a little higher voltage and i'm using fuses instead of breakers Folks, just want to do a quick quick update. If you've been following our videos and you see where we use these PDBs and that you notice they're all out of stock. Gold. It's because the of it. <laughs> the precious. The precious is precious. So we've got there's a there's a two to one. That's what you call a two to one, two out two out on one side and when down to number two on the other. When you're desperate, you go to eBay. Oh, when you get a fake cover because the covers are out of stock till uh, 2024. That's cool. That's a real I love cover. that. That looks like something you made. I was thinking about cover. making something off of a uh, 3D printer. What else you got there, boss? These are pretty much the same. We got a four to four to one, and a couple more two to ones. The problem with these is th uh, you can land a two out on one side, but you can't land larger than a number four on the other. So when you try to use number two SER cable. We just six did threes done sky high. We did one with 350 MCM on there. No, so. but you can't get. You can't get number two aluminum in there. 
You can get number two aluminum in that one, but you can't get number two in that. That's the what biggest that'll be is a four. Day. That'll do a four. Where does it say on the, on the side? That's where it tells you what they are. And it's their amperage rating. Yeah, biggest size is a four on one side and two watt. Oh shoot, these things will take a million amps. Heck yeah. So they're also called what? Contact? They're um Yeah, I'll be loading these up in my truck while Scott's. How dare you later on? I've looked high and low. I went to eBay, I went to Electorec, I went to Zorro, I went to wherever I could go to find these things. Meanwhile, I'm I'm producing hibises that That you won't tell the source. <laughs> I told you where these are. Solar Edge. No, this is, this is a Solar Deck pass through kit. What's up, guys? Huh? So, I, I'm, I'm going live. I'm YouTubing. What? I'm trying to work here. All right, so we are just about to mount panels on the string that we've added on. We've gone through this whole solar array. Let me show you. We've taken out the panel that was burn up and we've converted. 30 panel solar old solar array with strings of three into a 27 panel solar array with strings of nine and we've gone through and checked all the connections and um, eliminated about 500 connectors uh, unfortunately we are going to have to just leave a space there but maybe he'll customer's going to figure out something else he wants to do with a couple of solar panels and we can mount them back if he ever wants to nothing wrong with that <clears throat> so we're not totally done here yet, but uh, we are about to mount 10 new 340 watt Q cells. So he'll have 3,400 watts coming into one channel of his solar arc, and then he'll have three paralleled strings of nine coming into the other channel of the solar arc. Now, if you parallel more than two strings going into one channel of the solar arc, you got to fuse those, which we did. So we got Snap and Rack Ultra Rail. If you guys have used it, we use this all the time. We like the uh, quick bolt. That's the quick bolt right there. Quick bolt with a little bit of, with a snap and rack ultra rail foot on it. So the quick bolt has a 5 16 shank. Takes a half inch nut. And this right here, you drive it on with a six millimeter hex. Love those quick bolts. Show you one a little bit. All right, so here's how I've taken these combiners and basically turned them into pass-throughs. This one, I'm just using it as a pass-through. The solar circuits are coming in and going into the top, and then those are the feeds that are going down into where the solar is and the, or where the inverter is in the electrical, electrical room. And here I've taken three strings that we, we used existing wire that we found that was good up on the roof and I'm combining them right there with that bus bar. This is a fuse holder. A little fuse goes in there. And I've got fuses going in here. So I'm protecting my uh, three solar strings because if you combine more than two, you need to fuse them. And um, then they're combining on this bus bar. These things are actually biting down on this bus bar. And then that's the wire going back on number six, going back. And then I'm combining them on the negative right there. So it's day three of our install. And I'll show you what I'm doing in the inverter room real quick. Everything's pretty much done there. We're testing. And Scott is working on the well from... Double A, H double, E hockey six, whatever. It looks like you got three very capable gentlemen here with you. Yeah, I'm going to get in a chair. I'm going to sit on his bucket and watch. These guys look like they know, but they've been in a well before. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you nothing either. Just like we kept on pushing, just like Rambo. And one day I, I snapped. Kept on pushing. One day I snapped on you. Hey, there's some scrap. No, they still working. Oh. Hey, so let's see what's got. Does it smell like it used to in there? One time I was in this well and the mothballs were really smelling. You ripped most of it out. So what? Why is it so bad in here? I don't understand what you're. What all the hus hit well, hus you haven't, about? You haven't seen it all. We already took it all out. Well, I don't plumb them either. So you don't even know what you're looking at. I mean, I know what I'm looking at. I don't plumb because I swore never to plumb again. Well, you need to jump right in there and start plumbing. Pull that pump. 
Yes, you gotta pull the pump. It's at 325 feet. Sung on one and a quarter gallon. You don't have a pump truck because you can't get a pump truck in here after 25 years of growth. Trees are bigger than a pump truck. And it's 120 feet of gallon. I don't know what it is yet. I'm gonna pull it up here. Well, I'm gonna say a pair of it's on poly for you. It ain't on poly. No. You, no. no. Okay. All righty. You see our well wheelie? What are we gonna do? Oh, that's cool. You're We're gonna, gonna bring that like black that? poly. No, we're not gonna pull this out. We're gonna bring the other one in. And this one is just, just die. Just pick it up, clamp it off, get yeah. soaking wet. Just live with it. All right. Quit your whining. Cool. I'll be inside doing elegant solar things. So if you're operating behind the meter and you're not selling power back to the grid, uh, the CTs are critical for that functionality. And you can see right here, these are the CTs installed. With the Solark, you want to make sure that the CTs are installed with the arrow on the CTs going towards the grid. And um, you also want to, if, if you have to extend this cable, you need to protect it with a shielded twisted pair. I think they want you to do a 23 gauge, um, which is kind of a hard wire to find sometime, but it's usually found in the, in the Cat 6 world. On this particular install, our CT wires were actually long enough to reach into the Solar. So the CT wires land inside of the terminals on the Solar, of this, this kind of like communication strip. And um, if they're reading right, LD should be close to zero and uh, HM should be, they're saying that H H HM should never be negative. So here's the part in the Solar that talks about it. In limited to home mode, HM values will be close to zero. HM values should never be negative. If negative, the sensors are not installed properly. Possible limiter sensor issues. Sensor polarity is wrong. Sensors are not fully closed. Sensors are wrong wires. They're facing the wrong direction. So right now I'm kind of troubleshooting, trying to get my limited power to home sensors working right. All right, guys. So I did get the... Limited power to load working right. And you can see they're barely pulling any power from the grid. Most of the power is going into the battery. Or there's got, they've got a little bit of load in the house and that's indicated by the light bulb. And then you can see limited power to load working here. And what it's trying to do is just offset what they're using in the house. So on our traditional system, these are our critical loads panels. This is the main panel on a traditional system like a Schneider or a Radian or one of those old school systems. If they're behind the meter and they can't sell back, it only powers what's in this panel. But on a Solark, since we had those CTs in, we can also see power that they're using in there and we can push power back, but not push back into the meter. So that's a really nice function to have. So as I showed you, he doesn't have a lot of load in his house right now. He's only pulling about one and a half kW, but the batteries are a little bit discharged. So they're taking current. They're taking total, it says they're taking 56 and a half amps. So if I go down to these Fortress batteries, that one's drawn 27 and that one's drawn 28. So they're just about matched up perfectly. This one's it coming towards 99%. This one's coming at 96 and a half. So they'll both get full. And um, when these batteries are full, the solar will just make as much as it needs to power the house. But you can see he's pulling hardly anything from the house. And that is limited power to home. All right guys, so we are done with the upgrade to this solar system. We're finished with the upgrade from a Schneider XW system to a Solark, and uh, it's working really well. There's those three strings of uh, old panels coming in at 10 amps, 254 volts, and that one string of new panels coming in at four and a half amps, 317 volts. Now that's not the max power, remember, that's just making what it needs to power the loads in the house and charge the battery. We've got a uh, bypass, which we put on all our systems. If they want to bypass the inverter and just pass generator power or grid power through, all they've got to do is hit that bypass. And that allows you to service the inverter. If you need to take the inverter out, send it off, get it fixed, 
the inverter goes down, something like that, we, we like having a bypass switch in. That's just a DC disconnect for the solar strings. And down here we have 760 amp hours of lithium. These are the uh, Fortress Evolt Classics. Now you would get the Fortress Evolt Max if you were to buy a new one. These batteries are like 14 grand in 2021. Here's the sticker on that one. If you are looking for a battery like this or a battery system or help designing a battery system, you can contact me through this page. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar and I do complicated battery systems and retrofits and new installs and all that good stuff. And then out here we have our utility disconnect switch combination generator switch. This is just, we've used a transfer switch, but if it's, if you put it in the down middle position, it disconnects them from the utility, which is required by the utility. And if you switch it down, it's in the generator position and that allows generator power to go to our system for battery charging and powering the loads. So this is not a whole house generator configuration. This is just if the uh, battery gets low and it's not getting enough sun, the generator is going to auto start from the solar arc and power, power the loads and charge the batteries. All right, guys, so we're just about to head out of here. System is complete. We've got these three. This whole group of panels is wired into three strings of nine now. So there's 27 panels now going into one MPPT of the solar arc. Now remember, if you parallel three strings, gotta fuse them, but you can do it. You can send them all into one MPTP, MPPT channel of the solar arc. And then here's our 10 340 watt Q cells. So these were 260s. They were by Ceneva. Got a new EMT conduit run heading up there to tag on where our roof penetration was. We were able to use all the existing wire that we found that was still good. And then these, this is 3,400 watts. That's going into the other string. So this is another one for the books. Nice little garden down there. Pretty little mountain view.